Today's talk is called, I Want to See the One. I, uh, I had this realization a few weeks ago. It's like, oh, we're all one. Well, I want to see it. I want to see it in my consciousness that we are one, not that we are two. I, and that's why I said, in the, I think it was in the meditation, I said, we come here dressed up in different bodies, different clothes, but we're still one. And I believed it when I first heard in Unity that everything we think affects everybody, it affects all beings because we are all one in divine mind. Now I'm gonna read this little thing, definition to everybody here. And it says, the metaphysical meaning of one, one life and one intelligence. There is one spirit, one principle of life, love, intelligence, and goodness in, through, and over all, even God, the good, omnipotent. One mind, there is but one mind. Every individual in the various phrases, or not phrases, phases of character that make the individual are but states of consciousness in the one mind. One presence. And one power, God, Spirit, is the only presence in the universe and is the only power. He is in, through, and around all creation as its life and sustaining power. One Spirit, mind, God is the one Spirit, mind, in which all ideas of life, love, substance, intelligence, and power originate. So we're all wanting it, we keep preaching to, or we keep preaching millions and we can't, you know, well, if you didn't do that, I wouldn't have to think this way. Well, the fact is, if I didn't think this way, you might not have to do that. And I never thought of it quite like that before. And so what if we're all working together, sometimes in a hideous way, I'll give you that. But sometimes, you know, we're all working together to wake up. What if that's that's what's going on in the world right now? All this likes and dislikes and the separation and the, I mean, it just shocks me. How much hate do we need to express in order to wake each other up? Couldn't we just wake up? Couldn't we just take a, a lovely thought of God and wake up? And, I, you know, and the, and the, the people who use the Bible as a weapon it's like, cut it out, people. Stop sending your, your loved ones to hell. Please. Please stop sending me to hell. I've been there, and I'm not going back. I, uh, and I mean, I've been there in this body with this mind, and it was awful. It was just awful. And I, but it took that to get me here. So I won't say it was bad, but I'm going to say I don't want to use that as my awakening tool again. Now, I have certain friends. No, well, they're not friends anymore. They're people I went to school with, high school with, you know, five, ten years ago. I'm kidding. But uh, I, uh, the, some of these people, that uh, there's one in particular that's been putting a lot of Bible, Bible, not quotes, actually, statements about the Bible. And a lot of things about sin and some of the things I actually like that I think her intentions are good and she wants to get us all when I say us I mean everybody within her friend scope to think differently and to rely upon God unfortunately I can't get you guys to follow me through talk about sin to talk about sickness to talk about death I can't threaten you with uh, a vengeful God, a wrathful God, because quite frankly, I'm not going in that direction. So I can't get anybody to follow me into the kingdom if I'm not going to, if that's what you need or want. I love, that's what that I, I speak of. But th let's get back to the one mind, just the one, the own mind. That uh, when unity, when I was taught, there is but one mind. That's a capital M mind. And we are all within it. And within that mind, every thought we could ever want is available. Every, every thought we could ever choose to use is available within that one mind. Those of you who have taken Thought Exchange with David Friedman uh, in, his, in his book and in his early workshops, he used to talk about that a lot. That Imagine that, and I hope I get this right, David. Uh, I'll get it close. Thank you. He'll correct me if I don't. That it's like you go to the thought exchange, like it's a place, like a library or something, or and 
and you say, excuse me, I would like to trade in this thought or exchange this thought, uh, you know, this thought of lack for a thought of prosperity. Oh, okay, great. And the person behind the counter says, well, I'm just going to take this thought of lack and put it up on this shelf because I'll keep it handy because I know somebody will be coming in for that in just a minute here. Did I get it right? Yeah, I got it right. I thought so. And so all our thoughts that we no longer want or that we, are, we trade in for new thoughts. Now, some of us, we get outside into the bright sunshine and we go, oh, I can't live without that other thought. We run right back in. So, oh, I can't take the thought of abundance. I'm going to have to take the thought of lack back. And, and uh, until... We no longer need a thought of lack. And then we go and we trade it in permanently for the thought of abundance, the thought of health, the thought of wealth, the thought of well-being. And, you see, and, and so in our thought exchange, since thought is cause, and so in our oneness, we are all sharing this mass of thoughts. And it's a big mass of thoughts. And we are all sharing and trading and it's, and it's like baseball cards or those pins at Disney. You know, you're, you're tra trading out this one for that one because, because I want to know how it feels to have this pin or this card or this or that. It's not that one is more valuable than another. It's that we want to know how it feels to have this. You see, every time I criticize someone or something, I'm doing that because I usually unconsciously, want to know, what does it feel like to criticize this today? And it's the same with, I want to go to the beach today because I want to know what it feels like to go to the beach. I, you know, oh, I, I want to take so, this much money out of the bank today because I want to know what it feels like to do with this much money today. And I'm going to call this friend or maybe a practic, almost a stranger, and say, you want to go to lunch today? Because I want to know what it feels like to sit down and talk to this person today. This I want to feel this connection. I want to feel this connection with the whole world, whatever it is I'm reaching out for right now. And, and I, uh, it, it, it hurts my head and it hurts my heart. And one would say, then why do you look at this stuff on Facebook? When I read some of the stuff there, that it, it's just, oh my goodness, there is so much anger looking for a home. There is so much heartache looking for a home. And so people are expressing themselves in some just heinous ways uh, publicly. They are publicly showing their rear ends, uh, their naked rear ends of misery. And isn't that a nice image? But think about it. Think about what you're doing if you're one of those people who are spewing forth uh, your, your fury. You are showing your naked rear end of misery and anger because it's looking for a home. And it often doesn't occur to us to offer our misery to the home of God so that God may give it back in truth and in wisdom. But you see, we are sharing this mass of confusion, this mass of upset, sometimes our mass of joy. I, I don't see as much joy on, on the Facebook, I'll tell you, as I do the misery, as the naked rear ends. And and so to to so oh, I'll bet God in the one mind has a loving solution to this. I'll bet Holy Spirit, which is not separate from God, but the voice for God, has a true story about this that I'm thinking about, whether it's positive or negative, has a true story, you know, something that won't change. Imagine us beginning to desire that so that we can see the one so that we can start to see the one of how we are connected in spirit, in truth, in wisdom, in light, in joy and peace and love. Imagine you know, that we would begin to seek. I'm working with a mentor right now who says, Sean, you know, you're going to have to get rigorously honest about everything as we do this work. And I thought, rigorously honest. Now, that doesn't mean insulting. That means rigorously honest. But you see, when I become rigorously honest, or any one of us does, then we no longer have secrets. And so 
we can no longer pretend to hide. We can no longer pretend. And it doesn't mean you become an exhibitionist with all, all your stuff, but it does mean when, when you begin to admit even to yourself, to someone else, and to, to someone else, and even the God of your being, because we do try to hide from God. It's like Adam and Eve in the garden hiding. Two people think they're, they can hide. God can't find them. And, God, and in the book, God's looking for them. How, 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 what's that about? Anyway, it's, it's, it's an allegory. And, uh, and the, point is, but the point is, the two people think they can hide from God. That we can pull a shade down and God can't see me while I'm doing this secret thing. Uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, that I think is a wrong thing to do. Because why would I want to hide unless I think I am uh, opposing the will of God? And what is the will of God? To be, for us to be happy, joyous, and free. And so to get on board with that and say, oh, oh, well, I guess maybe I need to clean up my street and enter into the one mind knowing I am safe and secure as I uh, tell on myself to, you know, you get a, a, you get a mentor, you get a, some spiritual being that you trust, that you know you're not going to be ashamed for it, you're not going to be sent to hell for it, you're not going to be humiliated for whatever's going on in your life. And you see, it's uh, this is for any time. It, uh, it's not for the pandemic time. It's not for not the pandemic time. It, the pandemic time is a great time to heal people. Oh, we would do so well right now to have true spiritual, mental, and physical healings. Uh, am I wrong? I mean, <laughs> and so in our oneness, I, I was sitting in the park the other day studying with a mentor of mine. We're just outside talking about healing attitudes and healing developments stuff that i've already been through a lot and then forgot stuff that he's been through and uh wants to keep remembering and uh and i you know i mentor others and for stuff that i do remember and i want to keep remembering some stuff with a lot of the people i work with that it's brand new information as far as they can tell and but it's all for the sake of healing and the point, the, here's the point of healing, that we would never want to hurt ourselves again. That we would never want to diminish ourselves in the mirror. And we would never want to hide from God again. And it's not that we can hide from God, it's that we want to. Because we think in our foolishness that God is a judge because we, we have a forgot that we are the judge. We are judging ourselves inaccurately and ill-equipped to do so. But we are judging ourselves and we put that on God. We put that on our neighbors. We put that on our spouses. We put that, you know, for, for a long time, I was buying a lot of stuff and lying to David about it because I wanted a lot of stuff and I didn't want to hear any criticism. And so I did that. Well, what happens? Suddenly there's secrets in our house and it, uh, it doesn't make for a happy household. And uh, because you don't know what the secret is, but you know there's something there. Anybody, you, you ever have that where, you know there's something up in this relationship and you can't quite define or discern what it is, but you know there's an inauthenticity with it. And then you have to decide, well, wait a minute, in this relationship, who's being inauthentic, the other one or me? And if it's you, then you can change it right away. David asked me to be more authentic, and I thought, well, I, I want to be happy in my home, in my relationship, so I said, okay, and I, I sought the proper channels to, uh, to uh, what's the word I want, to eliminate assuaging my feelings, to, uh, to, uh, to put aside that it's not safe to be uncomfortable with my thoughts. In my connection with everyone, I can be very comfortable and safe in my thoughts. I don't have to hide anymore unless I choose to. So in my oneness, I want you here, I'm going to read this. Don't try to stop me. I didn't need those papers. Let's start with this one from 
uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 of the Holy Spirit's interpretation. And the Holy Spirit says, as a servant of mine, you will learn things that will bring you great joy. They will seem to be revealed to you, so you will know they are my gifts to you. What is revealed to you is revealed for you and for everyone. For when it is revealed to you, it is also communicated to everyone through communication to the one mind that you share. So th this is the cool thing. As Spirit reveals to us the good that we are, that good is revealed to everyone. So we, you and I, are responsible for getting on board with wanting that good revealed to us. You know, it's, it's really falling short of the ideal to keep affirming the worst about another. It is really what keeps us in a proverbial hell. To keep affirming the worst about ourselves or anyone else. And I know how hard it is to get on board with affirming the highest. But keep inviting, keep inviting, keep inviting. One mentor of mine says his daily prayer is, God help me to not lie, cheat, or steal today. The other day he said, Sean, just keep inviting the joy of God in to tell you of the good that you are and how you no longer ever have to hide again. It is completely safe. Keep inviting it in. Because you see, in my divine revelation, everybody's affected for the good. In my, my, it's what a wonderful way to do service. Have a healing. Everybody has a healing. But if you refuse to heal, everybody's blocked. If you maintain the darkness, everybody stays in the dark about what you're in the dark with. That's a tough one. Remember the song, let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me. You're responsible. I'm responsible. How do I know you're responsible? Because you're here listening to me. That's how I know you're responsible. So moving on, <laughs> do not judge yourself for what you believe are your shortcomings. Remember that you are practicing to be one with me through your own decision to accept our oneness as your only truth. Because you still listen to the ego and believe it is you, you will seem to make mistakes in your own perception. But there are no real mistakes since there is only truth, which does not change and illusion, which isn't reality. Therefore, when you believe you have made a mistake, turn to me, turn to spirit. Ask me to use your perception for your learning. See, you take whatever works, doesn't work, Give it over to spirit so that you can get the truth back. Ah. Therefore, when you believe you made a mistake, turn to me, ask me to use your perception for your learning. In this way, you open yourself for another thought of mine to be revealed. In this way, you use everything within your experience as an opportunity to practice opening as an empty shell. Now, you know, if you've heard me say before, that, that what I what I say about spirit tell me what to think about uh Jim whoever Jim is tell me what to think about Maureen tell me what to think about the floor tell me what to think about the sky tell me what to think about the color yellow because you see I'm thinking about yellow and I need to know the truth of what to think rather than make something up about yellow because you see I will make something up and I'll either make up something positive or negative but neither thing will be true. Even if I'm having lunch with someone I dearly love, to go into prayer very, you know, momentarily and say, Spirit, tell me what to think about this being sitting across from me so that I don't make up things based on what they say, based on their table manners, based on how they compliment me based on how they might criticize me, based on the food I like or don't like. Tell me what to think about this food. But imagine, you know, David and I live together. Imagine if every single day I remembered to say, Spirit, tell me what to think about David. Tell me what to think about our cats. Tell me what to think about our house. Tell me what to think so that I remain in oneness 
with God, with spirit, with David, with the cats, with ourselves, so that I can remain in oneness with our neighbors and our neighborhood. Tell me what to think. And I do believe that if I ask, I am told. I may not always be listening, but I believe without a doubt I am told, and I want to reconfirm, you may not hear the answer right at this second, but I promise you, promise you with everything I, I know to be true spiritually, if you ask, you've been told, and it might be several hours from now where you have the opportunity for the realization that you've been told. I know things I had not, there was nobody brought me up to know that some of the things I know, most of the things I know. And, and so it had to come through the willingness to ask and the willingness to hear. Now I'm gonna read one more thing. This comes from Luke. I believe it's chapter 15 of Luke. And it's over here in somewhere between verses 11 and 24. And it says, here are some thoughts I ask you to practice giving acceptance to. The Spirit of God is one. Nothing exists that is outside of the Spirit of God. I exist, and so I must be within the Spirit of God. That which is within the Spirit of God is the Spirit of God. I and the Spirit of God are one. All else is illusion. As we move forward, I will help you to see and understand these thoughts more clearly. I also ask that you remember whatever is true for you is true for everyone and everything you experience. So whatever is true for you is true for everyone. We're not talking about my truth. We're talking about truth. So whatever is true for you is the truth for everyone. Is true for everyone, and vice versa. Whatever is true for everyone is true for you. Let's work at getting on board with what is true for us within the oneness. Thank you.